and welcome to Friday's edition of Cracking the Cryptic, where today we've got another of these amazing fog puzzles. Um, these are, in my opinion, the future of Sudoku. I've seen the future and it works. Um, and I tried one of these on the channel. Maverick has just literally flown past my window. It is quite incredible. Anyway, um, I tried one of these on the channel. It was by Chameleon. Um, only a couple of weeks ago, it was just an astonishingly good puzzle. It was such good fun. You can see that, that we only get to see that the middle box here by, because of this light. And we have to get digits correctly placed in the grid to reveal um, more of the more of the grid. And we gradually sort of make the fog of war disappear. Um, and it's such a natural innovation for how how Sudoku solving has gone. Now it's now it's very much online. You obviously can't do this on paper, um, and I do think it is it's abs it's such brilliant fun. Uh, this puzzle is called Riders on the Storm, and it's by James Sinclair. And yeah, I am uh, I'm very keen to try it. Let's just leave it like that. I think it's got an enormously popular rating on Logic Masters Germany, although actually it only came to our attention this morning and Mark sent it straight over and said, this is one that you'll want to have a go at. Um, and I mentioned this uh, as potentially sort of the new brilliant form of Sudoku in last night's stream. We had an absolute blast on the stream. Thank you so much if you spent time with us. We loved the chat. Um, we, we also got to solve two amazing puzzles. Mark did finish the Udakos puzzle, which completes the entire um, the entire set of puzzles from our 500,000 subscriber uh, special free app. That's, still, that's always going to be available. So j just do download it. Go to your app provider and type in Cracking the Cryptic and you will find it. And there is now a complete set of streams solving all of the puzzles in the app, which is rather cool. Um, but I got to do a puzzle by Joseph Neymar. I did guess Joseph as the setter correctly. And that was an incredibly clever puzzle as well. Um, so you could, yeah, definitely have a go at that if you've not had, a, if you didn't get a chance to watch the stream. We, I also actually want to shout out a couple of people who made incredibly, incredibly do, um, generous donations last night. Um, Boo Boo and David Ratner two absolutely amazing contributors, supporters, kind commenters on the world of Sudoku. And the two of them last night just blew us away. So thanks to them. We really, really appreciate it. Um, now, what else do I need to tell you about today? Let me, well, let's start with the Kickstarter. <laughs> Maverick has, is getting lower and lower. So uh, the Kickstarter, we've got the spiral bounding is now, a spiral binding is now available. Um, and um, if you want to get a copy of our new book, Cracking the Cryptic's Greatest Hits, this is the only way to do it. Um, so go over to the Kickstarter. I'll put a link on the screen now before the days run out and grab yourselves a copy. Um, next, I want to talk about Patreon. I've got more names to read out from the duality pack from the Sudoku Skunk Works and successful solvers thereof. But also I want to start to trail the 12 labors, uh, labors of Hercules. <laughs> which is our new reward for the start of November, which is which is coming up fast. Um, so you can see at the bottom there, it's by Piotr V, Spartacus and Panthera, who were responsible for the puzzle pyramid. I know many of you will have played through that um, last year. An incredible, incredible series of puzzles. This one is, is also beautiful, and we're going to do exactly what we did for October. So there is going to be, uh, to enter the competition, um, for, for the monthly reward. You just have to solve one puzzle by each author. And there's a special website that will deal with deal with that and tell you what to submit to us if you manage to do it. If you manage to solve all 12 of the Labours of Hercules puzzles, then send in your answer that you get from that to us and we'll give you, of course, a shout out. You will have definitely deserved it. Um, so that's what's coming up. 1st of November should be very cool indeed. Um, now, all oh, the names, let me read them out. So very well done to Michael Hills, to Mike Viney, to Florin Noller, Omri Ben Altabi, Nick Hopkins, Matt VY, Lepi R64, Andrew Edwards, Valentin Noyes, Spencer Capera, Ryan S, Pamela Skinner, Daniel Cedar, Craig Wotherspoon, Walter Matthews, and Chris McNabb. And don't worry, if you've not heard your name read out yet, it will be coming in the coming days. Um, 
And the only thing to do before I get to try this puzzle is to wish a few happy birthdays. Happy birthday to Jonathan in San Diego, whose age is a secret today. Now, some of you will know how old Jonathan is yet, but I'm not saying anything. Um, also to Andy, who's turned 35 today from your partner, Paul. Happy birthday. And Dan, down there in St. Austell uh, in Cornwall, my favourite county. Uh, of England and Dan I hope you have a brilliant birthday too so I hope there's lots of cake going on for Dan, Andy and Jonathan and we wish you a happy birthday one and all um, and that's it so now I get to do the puzzle this is what I've been looking forward to so the rules are as follows normal Sudoku rules apply uh, the grid is covered with fog with an initial light source in the central cell there um, Digits also act as light sources and when placed correctly, illuminate the cells around them. So what you mustn't do, what you really mustn't do if you get this puzzle is fill in random digits in the fog to, to because it will then reveal what's behind the fog and that will spoil the, the experience. So please don't do that. Um, Chameleon dealt with that by having lives that you would lose if you did that. But uh, this puzzle doesn't seem to have any lives. So I think um, it, it is open to you to cheat, but don't cheat. Um, now, the sum of the digits within a cage is given in the leftmost cell of the top row reached by the cage. All cage sums are given. OK, that's immediately interesting to me because actually I can't see any numbers in these cages. So we're going to have to work out where. Oh, that's interesting. <laughs> that is interesting because that looks like it's the top of the cage, but it obviously can't be um, because of uh, of that rule where we so so all the cage totals are given somewhere in the fog is basically what we're being told. Um, digits cannot repeat within a cage. Okay, that's normal killer Sudoku. Digits on arrows sum to the number in the connected circle and can repeat if allowed by the other rules. That's normal. All arrow sums are single digit and arrows do not overlap or intersect. So, OK, I mean, I've not done any thinking about this yet, but imagine this was a three cell arrow and it just took in those three cells. And imagine we put, um, actually, I'm not going to do an example in case I guess the right digit. But imagine that was one, that was two and that was three. One plus two plus three equals six. So we'd write six into the circle. That's how arrows work. Um, Digits in cells with a grey circle must be odd. That one. So that's got to be an odd digit. Digits in cells with a grey square must be even. There are two of those. Cells separated. Oh, cells separated by a knight's move in chess cannot contain the same digit. Well, I should be well practiced at this after Joseph's puzzle last night. So what that's saying is imagine this. Oh, you see, I'm, again, I'm not going to do an example, but basically put a digit in the central cell. Then we would know that none of those digits could contain that central celled digit because that would put them a knight's move apart. And in this puzzle, that's illegal. So do have a go. The way to play is to click the link under the video as usual. Now I get to play. Let's get cracking. And this, well, this is instantly quite mysterious. I was about to say that I could write in six here, but I actually can't because Although it looks to me like this is a three cell. I don't see how it couldn't be a three cell arrow. I suppose I'm, I'm not certain it's a three cell arrow because I can't see what's beyond the fog. But it does look like it's going into that cell. And then this cell looks like it's the arrow is just coming straight back into box five. But the problem here is that this cell could repeat, couldn't it? It could be there. So there could be two of this digit on this arrow. And if that's the case, well, OK, this this cell here is even. So it's it's at least two. So if this was a minimum of a one and a two, so if the, basically if that was double two one, that could be a five. So that's five or higher, but not six or higher. OK, and the same thing looks like it's happening here. Look, it looks like this arrow flutters outside. It, it it pokes its toe into the fog and decides, no, 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 I don't like the look of that. I'm coming straight back into box five. Um, and who could blame it? But again, this digit, there's nothing saying it couldn't be this. It couldn't repeat this digit. So again, that's a, that's an even number. So that's at least two. 
So the minimum we can put on the arrow would be two, two, one, and that would add up to five. So these cells are at least equal to five. I am gonna put that in because I haven't got anything else that's really jumping out at me. I mean, no, I'm, well, I suppose if I'm, if I'm saying that this is one of five digits, I should really do the same thing for the even cells and the, yeah, okay. All right, I'm going to get all pencil marky on this. <laughs> um, Oh, maybe it's where the high digits go, because... No, okay, I don't like that idea either, because it occurs to me that this could be a one-cell arrow, in which case that could be a nine, and then that could be a nine. So normally on an arrow, you wouldn't think you could put a nine, but on a one-cell arrow, so if this was just a circle, obviously this that's just saying those digits are the same, and that could have a big number on it. Okay, all right, so I think it might be to do with um, these cages then. So what we're told is that the cage total, which is obviously somewhere hidden in the fog, has got to be in the top left-hand cell. Uh, let's just check the wording of that. It's given in the leftmost cell of the top row reached by the cage. So that's normal killer Sudoku positioning. Many of you will be familiar with that. So in this cage, where are we putting? Oh, uh, right. So let's try and actually build this cage because this cage is going into this cell for sure. And what it's not then doing is going there because if it was going there there wouldn't be this little line I don't know if you can see that but I can especially with my new glasses there's a little line going down here which is delineating this cell it's saying that this cell and this cell are not in the same cage but right and we've got to put yeah okay so I so we know what this cage looks like actually because remember none of these cells here contains the leftmost cell in the top row of this cage. So we've already got five cells there in the cage. What's the maximum number of cells we can have in a cage? Well, it's nine. And that's because every digit in the cage needs to be different. And there are only nine different Sudoku digits. So how do we get to at least this row or higher from this cell here, which we know the cage enters when it can't go to that cell? Well, the answer is those two, and then we've got to get there. So that's, that cage is forced to be a sort of Loch Ness Monster type um, shape. That is absolutely forced. So it's a nine cell cage, and this cell, when the fog is cleared, is going to hopefully contain a secret number. Because nine cells with different digits, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. The triangular for nine, number for nine is 45. Don't tell your friends that. That is a secret you should only share with those that you cherish. Um, so hopefully we'll find there's a 45 here. And that's sort of interesting. Um, okay. This one, where do we know what do we know about this cage? This cage is going down into this cell. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Oh, I see. Ah, right, hang on, I hadn't appreciated this at all. Right. How does this cage grow? Remembering that neither of these cells is the leftmost cell in the top row of the cage. Well, I was sort of assuming this would loop round here somehow, but it can't do that. It just can't, it can't get to this cell in nine cells. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. It's nowhere near getting high enough. So that means it's got to get to at least this row because if, if, you know, if we, if it only came up as high as this, this cell would have been the, the top leftmost cell in the cage. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. This one's forced as well. This one is forced as well. There is actually only one arrangement of this cage. This is really lovely, isn't it? Because we have to get above this row and we can't come into this cell because of the cage delineation. So we've got to go there. That is, that is also a cage. 
and hopefully that will have a 45 into this this cell in the fog and this is the exciting thing about this puzzle is it, or these sorts of puzzles is once you get a digit and it opens up you sort of feel like magic is happening right so let's complete the ideas then what's this one where is this one's well that could be that cell couldn't it one, two, three, four, one, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yeah. Okay. So this one has to get to this cell because it can't get to this cell. So it's got to get, I don't know if it can dip down one, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yes, it could. Okay. So that one, however, that grows, I'll just make that blue for a moment. We know that it's getting at least to here. It could be going up higher, but those therefore have to be in this cage. Um, hmm. And we don't know how big this cage is, do we? It's a minimum. If it sort of went in a very direct direction and just did that, it would be seven cells only. But it could be nine cells like that, or it could be nine cells like that. Don't know. All right, so this one is a bit ambiguous, I think. And this is strange because although I feel like we've we've made some discoveries, we haven't actually we haven't actually learned anything about, or I haven't revealed anything in the fog yet, have I? So there must be some trick to this, which is probably going to involve the knight's move. Uh, let me think about that. That digit. That digit. Yes. Oh, I see. That's actually, oh, hang on. Right, hang on. Right, it is this digit. It's this digit that's interesting. I still don't know what it is, but it's definitely interesting because think about the nature of the green cage. The green cage contains all of the digits, one to nine, because it's a nine cell cage. So whatever this digit is, which is not in the green cell cage, needs to be in the green cell cage somewhere. Well, where does it go? It doesn't go in those cells. They're in the same box as this digit. And it doesn't go in those cells, they're in the same row. And it doesn't go there because that's a knight's move away from this cell. So it goes there. Those two digits are the same. Um, let me go to letters. These are the same digit. Now that's an even digit. So that's an even digit. Let's do that. And this is on the arrow. So it's not eight or, si uh, or six because it, we can't put two sixes on an arrow and keep this down to a single digit total. So this is now two or four. And A goes in one of those cells on the right hand side by Sudoku. And then this digit also has to appear. Oh no, that Right, okay, that's perhaps less important. And this digit, I think, could go in this cell, this cell, or this cell in green. This, so this could still be five. If that's a one, two, two, one, that's five bobbins. Um, <laughs> and although I've now got a pencil mark outside the in, in the fog, I haven't actually done anything useful. Right, okay, but we can... Ah, ah, right. This is very cool because that digit's got the same restriction because that digit needs to appear in orange. Orange is also a nine cell region. So where does this digit go in orange? Well, not there not in its own box, and that cell sees those three cells through a medium of Sudoku and Knight's Move Jiggery Pokery. So that digit goes there, which is the even digit on the other arrow. So that digit is two, four, six, or eight. Ah, no, not those things. Uh, hang on, let me go back to numbers. And again, it's repeating on the arrow, so it's not six or eight, and that gives me a two, four pair look. 
Right. And that is really interesting because that means one of these numbers is a four and it's got two fours on its arrow, therefore, which means its arrow. Well, it means loads of things. It means it means its arrow adds up to nine because it's going to be two fours on the arrow and we have to have a one in one of these two positions now. So there is a nine on one of the arrows. And then the other arrow is going to have double two on it, but not a one because the, the one is hypothecated for the nine arrow now. So that. So the other arrow is a seven arrow. That's completely beautiful. James Sinclair, this is really this is not what I was expecting at all, but it's absolutely beautiful. But I think this is right. Imagine that I, I can't do um, investigative digits today because I will potentially, you know, if I put double four in here, it might be correct and that will reveal stuff I don't want to know. So imagine this was double four and then this would be a one. Well, that will make this double two. But then this couldn't be a one. But it also couldn't be a two or a four. So the minimum value of this digit is then three. But it can't be five here. It couldn't be because although double two and five do add up to a single digit total, they add up to nine. I'm already saying that one of these is a nine and that's the one with which has got the fours on it. That is so beautiful. So this is a one three pair. And this is now a seven nine pair. So I still haven't actually. Oh, I have, I've got a digit. I've got a digit. Right. This is where it gets exciting. Look, this digit now is not one, three, seven or nine, but it's odd. So look, what, what, let's see. Oh. Oh, it, it's all a bit, all a bit weird, actually. It's sort of, it's got like a stair effect around the edge. I don't know if that's my, that might be my glasses, actually. Um, that's not revealed as much as I thought it would. Let's think about what that means. Those two digits are the same. I need to keep track of that. Um, so let's let's make that B. So B is in one of those cells. Does B have to? Yes, OK, this is good. This is good. Where is B in green? It must be in green. But it's not in those cells because that's B. It's not in these cells by Sudoku and it's not in those cells. So that is B. So that is a 2-4 pair. And that is also a B. I'll put the B in the corner like that. Now, can I just do the same thing with A then? So A needs to appear in orange. Um, no, A might be allowed to be down there. These two digits, oh, OK, these two digits are six and eight by Sudoku. And therefore, whatever the, wherever this arrow goes, it's got to be quite a big number. Oh, come on, that's so that's absolutely gorgeous. Right. That is absolutely gorgeous. So the, the maximum value of this cell is three because we're adding at least six to it. And we've got to keep it down. We've got to keep the total wherever that lives over here down to a maximum of nine. But look, this digit sees the one three pair because it sees both of those cells because of the knight's move. So it cannot be one or three. So it is two, which means this is not okay, more. This is now not eight. So that's six. <laughs> this is so cool. This is an eight by maths because six plus two equals eight. Look at this. It's opening up. Um, that's an eight. That's probably not going to give me anything because it's right in the middle. So it doesn't reveal any fog. Um, okay, right, what's that done then? I, okay, that too is looking down at B, making B a four. So B is a four, which means I get more re revelation. Uh, that 45 is exactly where we expected it to be. That's got to be a one. That's now a nine by mathematics. That's a seven by the fact that we know that this is double two 
and three and everything's coming out to play isn't it so we've got, so look our cages were correct um although this one hang on is that oh right I, I was just wondering about this cell because it looks like this cell's got nothing in it but i think that's because i've not revealed enough around it so it's still effectively in the fog of war um hang on so hang on i've got to put nine in in this cage well that seems to only be able to go there <laughs> that gets me a four oh so that gets me a 42 here so this one was isn't growing up there this blue one is stopping here and 42 that could be a seven cell cage if it's missing a one and a two um anyway let's just think about those two digits now because we know what they are they are one they're one and eight i've not put one and eight into green and there's an eight there so that's got to be eight that's got to be one um now what does that mean my, my my knowledge of what a is has somewhat diminished since i've put digits in let's get rid of a now sorry a i think a was something to do a, yes a was the equivalent of two wasn't it so there's a two in one of these cells um there is an oh lovely where does eight go in box six now by sudoku i know it's in one of these three cells but there's an eight up there so it's got to be there because the knight's move is removed. Look, we get an odd digit here, which is very unhelpful in that it's got nothing odd looking at it, even even using the mad medium of knight's moves. So that's a 179 triple. That's that's a naked single. Sees one and nine, so that's got to be seven. So this is a one nine pair, and that one tells us that this isn't a one. So that's one, that's nine. We didn't get any more revelation from that. These squares have got to be three five and six we must be able to do ah oh, we can get rid of six from that one okay that's a bit disconcerting that's not really done as much as i was hoping and oh right look this cage now if we look at the look at the lines we've got it's growing down here one two Right, so it's so it's an eight cell cage, so we can now draw the, our blue cells in, and it, it must it can't be bigger than uh, eight cells because that would make it a nine cell cage, and we know nine adds up to the secret. It must be a forty five cage. This is a forty two cage. Now, if it's a forty two cage missing one digit, it's missing the digit three, so that is not a three anymore. Which actually seems remarkably unhelpful <laughs> um okay so what does that mean then this digit can't be seven nine oh or three because it's in this cage yes so, so the circle is telling us this digit is odd now so it's not three seven or nine so it's one or five right that's that's absolutely gorgeous again this puzzle is stunning it is stunning it's seriously clever not just from a sort of fog of war perspective but logic like this is beautiful what's this digit and the answer is not five, believe it or not, because if this was five, where do you put the five in this box? If this is five, you can't put five a night's move away. So that becomes five and that then repeats in the blue cage, which is against the rules. So that's a one. And we've got double one on. <laughs> we've got double one adding up to. You don't see this on arrows very often. Double one adds up to two. And that reveals a whole load of uh, absolutely useless cells in the corner. Um, okay, so one of the things I'm thinking about now is where does two go in this row? 
which I don't actually think is a very sensible thing to consider. It doesn't actually seem to be terribly restricted. Um, right, so where should I look? Should I be looking at this cage? What do we need to put into the orange cage? We need to put in two, three, five, six, seven. Two, three, five, six, seven. I am. I'm actually just not sure whether there's anything going on there. I'm just going to pencil mark that quickly. I can't see what's going on. That's not two or five. I can see that. So that's three, six, or seven. It was this one that's not got a three in it. This does have a three in it. Um, three, six, or seven. I don't think anything else is poking, sort of any other knight is staring at this one. That's not seven. Ooh, this is, okay, this is not going to, according to plan, is it? Um, what about that cell is not five or seven because it sees those through the knight's move jiggery pokery. Hmm. Ah. Oh no, this is this is more obvious than I was making it. Right. Look look back at this box. Now we know there's no three in this box, but there's every other number. So that means there must be a seven in one of those cells. And in fact uh, no, I don't know where it goes. There, there is a seven in one of these cells. Now, but that's going to knock a seven out of those cells, and I've got to put a seven in this um, in this region. So it's got to be exactly there. Okay, <laughs> got me another bit of fog revealed. Um, so that means this cell is now three, five, or six. I think. Right. Can we repeat that trick somehow? Yeah, well, OK, I, I, I can't do it exactly, but I can do something else, which is to say, is it possible there's five and six in these three cells? And the answer is no, because then this would have to be a Schrodinger cell because I need to put five and six in blue. Now, if there's a five and a six in these cells, it's impossible to put five and six in blue because this can be one of them, but not both. So this is not a five, six pair. And that means that cell is a five or a six. Is that important? It might be. Um, hang on, let me think about this. So this is a five or a six. One of five and six is in here which means two and three are in here. Yes, and that makes sense. Okay, that does make sense, doesn't it? But, okay, this one can't be two because that would rule a two out of any position in, uh, in box six. You can see we've got our pencil mark two. So that's three, five, or six. Which is potentially interesting. Oh, I've got a five six pair in row six now. So these two cells are ah, there a two three pair unresolved, believe it or not. Ah, but that's good. That's good for this cell, which now can't be a three either because it sees a two three pair. So that means that this cell. So now I've got a five six pair in orange. So these squares are not fives and sixes not five so this is this is just a straight two three pair in orange the two up here tells me the order so sudoku helps me reveals a whole load of fog so three is now in one of two places in box two look potentially with a cell on the arrow that's oh that arrow cell can't be one or two so it's it's at least three what about that one 
Uh, can that one be one is the really interesting question. If it can't be one, then we're up to at least seven on this arrow. I don't know whether that can be one or not. It might be able to be, unfortunately. Um, right, so oh, I see. Here's a simple question. Where does nine go in row seven? Because that nine rules all of those cells out. So nine hides over there, which no doesn't give us nine up in in the top right hand box. It nearly did. So what are these digits now then? They are four, five, six, seven, and eight. Four, five, six, seven, and eight. That one can't be four, seven, or eight because of knight move, knight's moves. So that is five or six, which pairs up with that. So we've now got a pair in this row, and the digits we've got left to place are four, seven, and eight. That right, that one can't be eight by the the middle digit of the grid. That one. Oh. Bobbins, I don't know if we can do better than that. So we've got a whole load of fog down here, a little bit of fog up there. And hmm, and questions to answer about where to look next. Let's think about oh, nine. Nine in box eight. That nine rules all three of those cells out because of the knight's move restriction. So nine is hidden in the fog in box eight and therefore in one of those cells in box uh, this other box whatever this box is called box seven. Oh, we've got one two three four and five here so this is six seven eight and nine i will just pencil mark that in case that leads to some magic being revealed that nine sees that cell no, that's that was that was not a good idea. That's just not worked at all, has it? Is it five, coloring fives and sixes or something? I've got that digit I can see is different from that digit. So th so those two digits are the same variation. Let's use uh, let's use, we can go back to using A's now, can't we? Let's use A in the corner. So A is in, ah, so we've got a 9A pair, right. Yeah, this A, whatever that digit is, we know it's not the same as this because it's in the same cage. So it, it and it can't be in these by Knight's Move Sudoku. So A is in one of those. A is here. So A, A there's like an A9 pair in, in this, but in box seven now a is five or six so these cells are now exactly equal to five six or nine so three in this box is now relegated to the bottom row potentially in the corner potentially uh, three in box nine can't be there because of the knights move away from this so three right so three in column Three in column, uh, this column, sorry, I'm not being very descriptive there, but three in this column, you can see now it can't be in those cells at the bottom. So it's going to be up here somewhere. And that's very important for the following reason. He says desperately trying to work out what that reason might be. Um, no, I've got nothing. <laughs> I've got absolutely nothing. Uh, okay, so that's that's not done nearly enough magic has it okay i've got to sit up and take notice of this because this is proving recalcitrant um it must be is it that one now that's not one or seven or nine or nine or three ah it is this one this is five <laughs> that's absolutely well that's very very strange but look this cell here it sees seven by knight's move, nine by Sudoku, one by knight's move, and I've just worked out there's a three in one of those. So it can only be five given it's odd. So that's not five anymore. 
That's three or six. Mm. Ah, that's that's a gimme. Because where does three go in this box? It's got to be in one of those two cells. That's a three, five, six triple, and the three is in the top bit. So that cell's become a six, which means this is a five, which means that's a six, which means that's a five. That was A, remember? Oh, so we get A. A is that digit now. Let's get rid of our A pencil mark here. So, so now we know that this is a five nine pair, not a six nine pair. So five is now, we can ask where that goes in this column. And it's actually got to be in just one of two places at the top there. And this being a five gives us a six here because we can't repeat a digit in a cage, which means we've got a three five pair here. Okay, so six in the bottom box has to go down here now. So that's no longer a six. That's not a six. So six is in one of two places in box eight. This is getting, it's got quite intricate, hasn't it? It's got quite intricate. Um, oh, five in box two. Where does it go? By Sudoku, it's in one of these three cells and it can't be there by Knight's Move and it can't be there by Fiveage. So it goes there. Oh, we get a 45 gauge at the top. Three goes here by Sudoku. That's quite a big digit on this line. Um, do I know what this 45 shape is? One, I've got seven of its cells and then it's disappearing here. So that's eight of its cells. So there's, there's another cell apart from this one in box one. Okay, so it's probably this arrow we need to look at now. So that looks like it can be one. That would make that a four. Why doesn't that work? Ooh, maybe, well, I don't know, actually. That's probably it. Right, it's not because this digit is not two or three or four or five. Well, okay, so it's either 3, 1 adding up to 4 or 3, 6 adding up to 9. Uh, no, uh, hang on a minute. Let me just work out why it's not one of those. It is. Um, I don't know. <laughs> I'm sorry. There must be a way of doing that and I'm not seeing what it is. bother. Okay, let's tidy up some pencil marks and think again. We could... Can I get my twos and threes unwound over there? Is that something that's... I mean, it's something worthwhile. I just don't know how to do it. Three... No... Oh, five. Look. Oh, oh, look, that five is going to give me that digit. Now, that might be helpful. Yes, that's given. Oh, well, so now I know the whole shape of the 45 cage. Which might be, might matter. Um, so this cell now is at least equal to six. I was hoping that that was going to be, you know, there was going to be a knight's move away from this that was rendering it slightly, slightly difficult to fill. But I think it seems to be able to be six, seven, eight or nine. So this digit is one, two, three or four. It's not four, actually, because of this. So that isn't nine. It's not eight by Sudoku. So it's six or seven, which means this is one or two. Oh, and I've just noticed I've got ones and twos looking into this box in those positions. That's not two by Sudoku. Now, can we figure that out? The answer is I don't know. <laughs> oh, come on, Simon. Uh... Or is it this cage? I've not used this cage. That digit looks like it's going to be restricted.
Oh, that's gorgeous. Yeah, it is that digit. That's where we look next. Right, so let's have a think about where this purple digit goes in box three. And the answer is not in those cells by Sudoku. It can't repeat in its cage, so not in those cells. And it's not equal to five because it already sees a five in its box. So it's in one of these two cells. and I don't know which one. But now, where does it go in this box? By Sudoku, it can't repeat in its cage. So it goes exactly there where it is a one or a two. And if it's a one or a two, it's not a two. So that's a one. That's a one. That's a six by mathematics. This is now not a one. So that's a six. That's a nine. This is a seven by Sudoku. That's a six. That's an eight. Oh my goodness me, three in the row here has to go there. That reveals the final piece of the fog. I've not put two in this cage. Oh, I've got a repeated digit in this cage. Thank goodness I just spotted that. Yes, okay, so what I did was I looked at this and said, okay, this is a six, seven, eight triple. Well, that is total nonsense. I have not put four in this box yet. So that's a four, that's a seven. Whoops, a seven, that's an eight. And these two squares, well, that's still a three, and I now need to put two in the cage. Okay, so we avoided a total ricket there. That's a two, that's a three, that's a three. No threes in the corner, I'm afraid. Um, what about those digits then? So one of these is nine, one of them is seven. Seven here is nice. That can't be the seven. So that's seven at the top, that's nine. Therefore, that's one. We still haven't put purple into this row. So this square, these squares are four and six, which we can do. Six and four go in. These squares are two, three, and nine. That's a three uh, because of the two and the nine. That's a two. That's a nine. So these squares are four, seven, and eight. So that's seven. Um, I'm sure we can do the four. Yes, we can. There we go. Four and eight go in. So that's not eight, which means that's eight in our blue cage. Um, oh, this is a five, nine pair. Yes, which we can do. So nine and five go in, which gets five and three go in. Oh, we can <laughs> and that's three in the corner. That's three in the spotlight, losing its religion. Um, oh, that's mal that's absolutely magnificent. So now that's a six. This is a four or a seven, I think. Let's just put that that in. That six sees that by knight's move, so that's got to be a six. We haven't put nine in that column, so that's got to be a nine. And what's left? That four. Okay, so that's doing the seven. That's doing the four here. That's doing the seven here. This box. Well, it needs a one and a two in it, so we can put those in. And now it needs a four and an eight in it. So knight's moves help us out, presumably. Yep, four and eight can go into those cells. This needs to be a seven, eight pair. That's the last of the fog disappearing. That's gonna be a one and that's gonna be a four. What a brilliant, brilliant puzzle that is. That is correct. I mean, that is just sensational. Um, not what I was expecting at all. Uh, and it must it must actually, when, when you think about it, it must be very hard to set one of these because you're only showing a very small piece of the grid and you're trying to build out from that interesting logic. And that was genuinely fascinating. The fact that you could build the cages up with, immediately was quite cool. But then noticing that the knight's move restriction forced repeat digits on, on the arrows, and therefore you could actually work out the exact makeup of the arrows, which gave you a five here and sort of revealed beauty at the top. These puzzles are just, when they're done like that, this is why these are the future of Sudoku. I, would, I could do one of these every day and it would give me a great deal of pleasure. So thank you very much, James Sinclair, for setting this wonderful, wonderful Sudoku puzzle. I hope you enjoyed it. Let me know in the comments. I do enjoy the comments, especially when they're kind. And we'll be back later with another edition of, you've guessed it, Cracking the Cryptic. Fix that. Fix it. There we go. Now, now it's all good.